Let's go, German Chad. Willkommen in deine kleine Nachtmusik to all my followers. That's all I got. I don't know. I mean, uh, Bastian Schweinstager. You see the guy named Paul Tyson? And then Mike Tyson tweeted, like, I'm going to kill this guy, hashtag Paul Tyson, because he's fighting Jake Paul. And then Paul Tyson said, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, man. A little bit of Twitter discourse this morning, lighthearted. Mom, come pick me up. People are becoming members of the Apologista for Trains, Drops of Jupiter. People are posting... Uh, the lyrics to the song out of context and then saying, come on, this makes my eyes water every time. I'm not, I'm not saying it's good that you like songs. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't like that song because I think that it's bad. But if you like it, that's great. The more love that there is in the world, if a, as Tommy Wiseau said, if a lot of people loved each other, the world would be a better place. I just, I, like when the people were saying like, the best soy latte that you've ever had in me. And they're posting it like, come on, bro. This songwriting speaks for itself. And I'm like, in my opinion, you are right. But not where we've come to an awful conclusion. The opposite conclusion, I should say. I did like when people said, though, it's not even in the top three worst train songs. And I was like, there's no way that could be true. But then I'm like... I mean, Hey Soul Sister is, is horrible, and Meet Virginia is definitely, like, close to the worst. So, like, I don't know. There, there might be another train song that edges out Drops of Jupiter. Okay, do we have... You, you can hear. Okay, it's 2017. 8.4 billion! Everybody on Earth has listened to this 10 times. He's got the millennial hand clap, bro. I, I don't know it yet. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, those, those chords are, they're evoking something for sure. Let's go one more. Ah. Is this Despacito? Yes, it's Despacito. <laughs> it's free. It's a free space. Slow like a Spanish Spanish sausage dog chasing a pea. What is what does that mean? Slow like a Spanish slow like a Spanish sausage dog chasing a pea. Uh, I would like to not have diarrhea, what, but uh, then I need uh, some medicine for gonorrhea. Is it something like that? Despacito means slowly. Yeah 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 yeah. I know, but like. I'm more talking about the other 99.9% .9 of the sentence. We're going again, huh? It's a literal translation of the lyrics. When you say literal translation, is it like something was lost in the trans? Like it went from analogy to, in English, literal, and thus has lost all meaning? Or do you mean it is literally a direct translation? Yes, a metaphor was lost. Okay. I understand then. I know what you're talking about. Lost in Translation, kind of a crazy Spike Jones diss track. Listen, I know, I, honestly, I, I don't hold this against people who don't like Lost in Translation. If you didn't like Lost in Translation and you saw it in 2003, then your soul is not reaching heaven. If you watched, if you weren't alive in 2003 and you watched Lost in Translation in like 2017 or something like that, I can understand not being able to put yourself in the place and time to, to find yourself relating to the movie. Now, I mean, like, it's not like it was the only one dude was traveling to Japan in the year 2000, but it was kind of like, as it, 
is a different story, you know? Most people, when they went on like a family vacation or they traveled from work, they went from like Peoria to Springfield or something like that. They weren't going like New York City to Shinjuku, you know? So it's it, it back then it was like a little, it was like visiting like a, a an alien planet with all the lights and the glass towers and the and the billboards and the public transportation and stuff. Well, anyway, if you didn't like if you didn't like it at the time, you're lost. If you didn't like it now, that's you know it's, it's the same reason I don't really like Battleship Potemkin. You doing Jokerless today? So the title of the stream is "We're Saving Jokerless for Another Day." Let me guess. Not a big Lost in Translation fan. Why are you talking about Gen Z like they're all little kids? I'm 26. Gen Z, when when anyone complains about Gen Z not working, um, half of Gen Z is literally in middle school right now. Gen Z, when anyone complains about Gen Z's purchasing habits causing some businesses to become defunct, um, we're literally 26 years old. Sorry, I just... I, I went through it as a millennial myself. I'm just saying, like, you're not the first person to experience this. We're all real people here. Recycled bit? You you don't understand. It's a meta commentary because you're recycling my bit from 15 years ago when millennials were in the same position. And the crazy thing is, I know I'm plagiarizing myself. You think you had an original thought. That's the difference between you and me. Pick cards for hologram, Sag. No, you, you see hologram all the time. You know what? I, I, I say this all the time for other content creators. Number one piece of advice, Jay, you, you can agree or disagree with this. You would think the number one piece of advice is listen to your fans. The exact opposite is actually true. The number one worst thing you can do as a Twitch streamer is listen to your fans because they don't know what they want. When I was playing a difficult game about climbing, the number one comment that I got was we just want to see you play a good game. We don't care what it is. Now I'm playing a shitload of Balatro. People are like, we're just sick of Balatro. Sure, it's good, but we're kind of sick of it. They don't know what they want, man. All they ask for is marbles on stream. Look what you're doing to Jay. You're trying to gaslight him to play into playing five hours of marbles on stream every day. Marbles is fun though. You you it's you are addicted to gambling, which is fine in many ways. I'm I'm doing my pivot on no longer making fun of people for getting addicted to gambling because so many people are gonna be addicted to gambling in like five years that all these clips are gonna age like milk. Like, he's really making fun of, like, a devastating illness? I, I'm making fun of it because I warned you! I warned you in 2019, I warned you! And nobody listened. They just said, yeah, yeah, buddy, I'm on an 11-way parlay tonight. $20 bet, and if all 11 hit, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm just saying, back in my day, we used to have real gambling addicts. People would get addicted to playing slot machines where you had to manually feed like a loony into the top of it. People would get addicted to playing video poker or something like that. Just go into a casino in 1996, you would basically be saying, it's worth it. It's worth getting emphysema from the secondhand smoke. Nowadays, the Zoomers, they're not real fucking hardcore gambling addicts. You take away their phone, they'd quit cold turkey. Makes me sick, bro. Back in my day, we had real gamblers. We had people that would hitchhike from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, okay? Nowadays, you just fake-ass gambling addicts. Mm. The money line on Leafs Panthers, that's irresistible. Man, fuck you. Hey, K Katsune Miku. Hey, Mr. Northern Lion. Here we go. I think this is my first message in chat. Wrong? Wrong? That comes with a border around that says first time chatter. My friend has made the accusation you wouldn't know what frauding is and the knowledge would break you. This is all the hallmarks of I just turned 18 and I think I know everything about the internet. You're not the first perverted generation. You're not the first British person I've ever spoken to in my life. What do you think? I have a child. Think, the, think knowing what frauding is would break you. Bait used to be believable, and you know what? It still is, too. It still is, people. Hey, thank you, Kitsune Miku, for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I feel bad now. You got me. You win. I feel the negative emotions. The guilt. You didn't feel no guilt. Or, oh, no, but now I don't feel guilt because somebody just gifted you a subscription. Now you should feel guilty. We won. You see that NBA player got banned from life for betting on his own games? 
Okay, I mean, listen, that is pretty bad. He bet against himself. Listen, I'm a, a Pete Rose apologist, perhaps because I don't know all of his uh, the gambling allegations against him. But I was always like, that dude was like an amazing hitter, right? He shouldn't be banned from baseball forever just because he bet on baseball as long as he didn't bet on his own games. But if he did bet on his own games, he should be... You should be torched. You should be done. Even if he bets on himself to win. Yeah, just cause, like, it's just one of those things, man. I mean, it's just, one, I, I, as much as I want to, and trust me, I do, I want to dunk on the um, sports leagues for, like, partnering with betting companies and then saying what's the worst that could happen. And then, like, every sport now has a scandal where the players are betting perhaps on their own games or perhaps not. But, uh, really, once you cross the line of, like, betting on your own games, that's like, you couldn't have just bet on, like, someone else in the division. You still got some insider information. I'm sure people talk. You couldn't have bet on, like, Wizards versus Pistons or something like that. You had to bet on Raptors versus Knicks. Like, you're sick. That's, just, that's a sick man right there. He needs help. He had a Discord group he gave info to. That's crazy, man. But, like, what, what was his contract? Like, isn't that one of the reasons they get paid so much money is so they're not fucking selling insider information to Discord for like $5 a month? That's crazy. He wasn't that good? Okay, well, in that case, never mind. Discord! I'm howling at the moon! He bet 80k against himself for a 1.1 million payout. Yo, but imagine this story if he bet 80k against himself and then he overperformed like crazy. You would be like, that's a real baller right there. Like, that dude had the 80k on the line saying he was gonna suck, and then he had, like, a triple-double. He did accidentally hit a three-pointer. Okay, well, every time I make up, like, a hypothetical about his story being worse, people are like, yeah, that really happened on camera. And I'm like, oh, okay. Beautiful. Be a beautiful selection. Thanks for the $2. You guys see the TikTok of the um, Miles Morales NPC breaking character and getting mad that no one was following the stream? There's 11,000 people in here. There's 11,000 fucking people in here. And you guys are not tapping the screen, okay? Make sure that you're tapping the screen. There's 11,000 people in here. There's 11,000 fucking people in here, okay? Tap the goddamn screen, okay? Tap the goddamn screen. Okay, you see this button right here? Press the fucking button, okay? Press the fucking button. I think it would be such a good clip to play on a soundboard while I play the Sisyphus game. It was like, listen, we've got 11,000 people here. We have 11,000 people here. We have 11,000 people here and no one's tapping the screen. We have 11 fucking thousand people here and nobody's tapping the screen. Come on. We have 11,000 people here and no one's tapping the fucking screen. It's so good. Oh, man. But he's right, nobody's tapping the, tapping the screen, man. You seen the clip of him getting mad because someone's sending him too many galaxies? Wow, is that a galaxy? Enough for those. Wow, is that a galaxy? Enough for those, I might make it back to my own universe. Whoa! Wow, is that a galaxy? 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 Whoa! Oh, man. I, the crazy thing is, like, I believe it, man. Like, or I, I believe that he's mad. Or stressed out, I should say. Because, like, he's at work, man. I've seen him driving the Lambo. Hey, now, is Drops of Jupiter the worst train song? If you want to dick toward... The <clears throat> Hey, now, is Drops of Jupiter the worst train song? If you want to dictate the discourse here, you got to show up on time. I'm sorry to tell you that we already discussed that. Ooh! We already discussed that at the start of the stream today. Your ass shows up late thinking you got something hot off the presses. Come on. Hey, Soul Sisters, worse. You know, if you showed up on time, you would already know that I agree with you. What's wrong with Hey Soul Sister? You mean, apart from it being, um, like, the worst song of all time? Eh, it's, it's down there. Maybe the worst of all time might be a, a step too far, but it is down there. 
Fireflies? I would rather hear Fireflies than Hey Soul Sister. I'm not being ironic. American Idiot is worse. You don't know what you're talking about. That is just nonsensical. Not my favorite song of all time, but at least it has like a message behind it. Dance Monkey? Yeah, that's down there. That one... That one might be worse because of the, the role it plays in my life now, because my mom introduced my three-year-old daughter to it, and now she wants to listen to it all the time. That one's really bad. The Lazy Song by Bruno Mars. Uh, doesn't count unless it was on the radio. You can't, you can't do this... Like, we have to have a shared agreement on terms before we get into debate. People are always like, worst song of all time? What about a B-side from, like, some fucking horrible album from 1951 it was all over the radio well i've never heard it so nevertheless happy i'm i'm i i feel like i'm it, there's no accounting for personal taste there's a wide range of personal tastes okay happy overplayed not a great song but it kicks the shit out of hey soul sister by train Hey Soul Sister is like the song that an eight-year-old thinks plays in your head when you die. It's, it's distasteful. It's cloying. It's saccharine. It has nothing, that it, it, it's weightless, but not in a good way. It's like you saying like your, your favorite song of all time is like the graduation song by Vitamin C or something like that. It has a good message. What's the, what's the message? Don't worry, be happy, Bobby McFerrin. It's got no complexity. You're flat. Everything has to be complex, exclamation mark. Not everything has to be complex, but if you're, we're talking about the worst song of all time, you know, I'm going to have some data points in my favor, even if they are only opinions. No, you know what? I'm rescinding that. I'm replying to your message with the middle finger. We're not getting sidetracked in conversations anymore by a argument towards the absurd. I'm resorting to ad hominems. It's like if you told me your favorite food was chicken nuggets and I was like, really, no vegetables or nothing? And you're like talking, alternating caps and lowercase, all meals have to be good for you. That's not what I fucking said, but you're like 32 years old, you know? No, no, no carrots or nothing? No grains? Air fried french fries and dinosaur chicken nuggets, really? Well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna judge, I'm sorry. Hey, Anel, I just listened to Hey Soul Sister. It's nowhere bad as you made it seem. What did you think? You know what? This is the problem with society. In today's modern era, no disrespect to you, but about 80% of you are robots. Input comes in. It goes through a, an objective analyzer, and then output gets spat out. The song has no spirit. It was designed to sell moisturizer to your aunt, Okay. That, that, was, that song was not written from a place of art, from a place of genuine feeling, from a place of like, I have, I have some pain or a human experience that I want to turn and encapsulate into a, a piece of art that I can share with the world so we all feel a little closer to one another. That shit was like built in a fucking think tank by Dove Soap, okay? Its very existence is, in my opinion, subtle malevolence, an, an act of aggression against all that is real in the act of creativity itself. I find its presence detestable. It wasn't, you. what'd you think it was gonna start and go, <laughs> car accident, fucking police sirens, wee -oo, wee -oo, and then some dude going, <laughs> no, it's like, it's, that shit would never have made it on the radio because it's too daring. The train guy has an evil face. He looks like Lucifer. We're not doing that. We're not doing that either. I have no idea and, quite frankly, no interest in whether the lead singer of Train is a good guy or a bad guy. I'm 35, which means I can just evaluate the art on the actual merits of the art, and it's fucking dog doo-doo. We're not rehabilitating Imagine Dragons music because the lead singer has great opinions, okay? It makes him a, a better person. It doesn't make it any harder to press the skip button when, you know, the lightning and the thunder song comes on. I did see, like, in the, and, and it's, again, it's just music, it's not that serious. You can still be a great person and have a different taste in music than me, I imagine. That being said, when I saw people saying, like, if you don't like Drops of Jupiter, what's it like to not have a sense of wonder? I wanted to reply, yeah, that song really triggers my sense of wonder. I wonder when it's going to be over and they're going to play something better. <sighs> Fucking... 
Muppets ass two old guys in the peanut gallery type joke. What's their name? Wallace and Gromit or whatever. <laughs> Whoa, dude, there's a Muppet. Oh, ATP old, dude. I'm Statler and Waldorf. That's it. That's it. Ernst and Young. Ernst and fucking old. What about Hey There, Delilah? Finally, an intellectual chatter. Hey There, Delilah is definitely... It's in that Hey Soul Sister zone. Hey Soul... They, like, I'm trying to think of songs that exist in that zone. It's Hey Soul Sister, Hey There, Delilah. Fireflies is in there as well. Um... The Jason Mraz song, I'm Yours. Uh, I, Bad Day by Daniel Powder, absolutely in that zone. Yeah, no doubt. Great, great pick on that one. Hey there, Delilah bangs. No, it fucking does not bang, bro. Give your head a shake. Get in, get, come on, England, score some goals. Bad Day is a good song. We're f this full of hypocrites is, is what I'm learning. Chat's full of hypocrites today. It, bad day bangs, but let me guess. You find ironic by Alanis Morissette. Just a little too perfect. He turned 98, won the lottery, and died the next day. You expect me to believe that, Alanis? What about Fireflies? Fucking value brand postal service knockoff. You will never be such great heights. Does a song have to have meaningful lyrics to be considered good? You got me so backwards, you don't even know. I'm not, I'm not necessarily exclusively a songwriting Andy. It's more like when, and everybody has their own biases. The most detestable form of music for me is like adult contemporary, easy listening. Um, check out how soulful this song and songwriting is, but actually it does nothing interesting. I find it very boring. And it's, it, in a way, Perhaps the reason that it annoys me more than it may annoy some people is because I always feel that, like, if you listen to rap music or electronic music or rock and roll, people are like, that's cool. I remember listening to that when I was a youth. As I got older, I wanted something more sophisticated, like Mumford and Sons. And then they're like, oh, you just this song is so sweet. I love you and you love me back and I'd love to wake up next to you every day. A hoo hoo! It's just like it's it's been done, man. What do you want me to say? Just is not interesting. I can't believe that that train, the Lumineers, Mumford and Son. This is like James Murphy at the end of uh, Losing My Edge. If he was evil, Jason Mraz, the Lumineers, Owl City, Train. I'm trying to think of other bands that that fit into the category. Wait, quick, give me a good four syllable one that replaces Gil Scott Heron. There's got. Edward Sheeran! There we go, we got there. The Old Crow Medicine Show. The Chainsmokers. Megan Trainer. Tell me what you really want. Sorry. I, I kind of. I ended. I, this is, I, I, I went somewhere. I did not. I never. I told myself I'd never go back there, but here we are. This guy just hates music. You realize you're repping fucking train right now you're repping daniel powder like he wrote that song to be played in aldo that's not coming from the heart man like there's good music that i just don't like but like i, I never thought that there would be fucking ed sheeran shooters in the chat but james blunt shooters in the chat sure james blunt great twitter account my life is brilliant really you think you're a shooter for that that hits you in the soul it's not there's nothing wrong with it i just disagree where are you sitting on Jack Johnson? Outside the fucking venue in, the, in my car. Waiting for my friend's older sister to be done so we can drive home. I will, you will not catch me in the fucking Live Nation arena for that one. Thoughts on baby metal? Listen, I'll take shots at Jason Mraz. I'm not taking any shots at baby metal. They got real shooters. I'm actually... 90s maxing has had crazy consequences on my psyche. At first, I thought it was just going to local restaurants that are three and a half out of five and saying, this is pretty good. I realize now, and I've, I've become, it's like I've freed myself from the fucking carbonite freezing that Darth Vader put me into. You know how freeing it is to just express an opinion on media without couching it in like 
500 anticipatory rebuttals to counter arguments made by 14 year old kids on social media? Yeah, I understand that the singer has good opinions and donates a lot to charitable causes, but for me personally, I just don't really like the music that much. Maybe it's because I'm a product of my time and I wasn't really there, like I was living in Korea. What the fuck? You? I don't like the song. The end. We're bringing talking back. People used to tweet like they talked, now they talk like they tweet. And it's fucking everything up, okay? We gotta just start being like, I didn't really like that movie. Why? I don't know. I just left and I was like, I didn't like it that much. Is there like a plot hole or like you didn't like the cinematography or the blocking? Everyone's talking about the blocking these days. I don't know. It just didn't really grab me. Did you know the director is the head of the Directors Guild Union? And he, that good for him, good for him, good for him. Rhetoric is back on the menu. Exactly, I think. I don't know. Good advice, so I'm going to tell it to my English teacher. You've got one little problem there. Might not apply to you. It applies to me, because I'm not 15 years old. I already went through that gauntlet. I don't have an English teacher. I was an English teacher. We're living in different area codes. Well, I would say the, the first hour of Balotro, not the most productive hour of all time, but you know what? That's okay. Let's go. I, I just don't like the... I just don't really like the... I'm not, I, I think the Plasma deck is good. I just don't like it. No! You have to come with objective reasons for everything! <laughs> so you're not coming to lunch? I mean, just give me a normal deck, man. Whatever. We used to be a proper society. We used to be like, boom, green deck. That's as crazy as we got. Maybe on Saturdays we do the green deck. Nowadays, we're getting mired in all this errata. Me llamo T-Bone, the Aranya Discoteca. NL's a community head? Nope. Clip just got shared a lot on Facebook back in the day. He's right. How would you would have been like 12? Come on, he's right. You were still using Facebook when community came out? Yeah, I was still using Facebook in 2007. I know you were eight years old, and you like to think that you would have been uh, off of that earlier. You wouldn't have. You'd probably, because because you're on the same shit right now. You're not on Facebook, but you're on something that's going to have, a, like, the fucking Snapchat selling your pictures to the Chinese spy agency or something like that. They all got to make money, okay? 2007, Facebook was the only game in town. You, I mean, you had to have a .edu for a bit, man. I love that his go-to straw man is that a person's 12 to 15 years old. I didn't say they're 12 to 15. I said they were 12 to 15 in 2007, which means they're fucking my age now. Doesn't really make sense, but math is complicated sometimes. And you're like, it, it's, it, your straw man is always like, you made it up. But I got the demographics data. I can see my demos, bro. So you just admit it. You're like, it's a straw man, but you are right. I am 28 years old. Chatter says, anyone here lie about their age to get a social media account? Honestly, you... I'm, I'm telling you this genuinely, you should not admit it because like it might be something that could get your account shut down forever. Like I wonder how many huge Twitter accounts made their account when they were 12 and just stuck with it and then like got famous when they were like 19 and now they're like, <gasps> like they can't sleep at night because they're like, oh. <laughs> I made my account when I was 12 years and 304 days old. What is it about Balatro that makes you so aggressive? Where's my hug? You should smile more energy. No disrespect. I just, I can't imagine you would say something like that and then not have a rebuttal to a rebuttal that you knew was coming. What'd you think I was going to say? I'll be nicer next time. I'm not a rude guy. A lot of the comments that come in are taking shots at me. I'm responding with an equivalent level of rudeness. You're just used to a cushy life online with asymmetric sort of dynamics where you quote tweet someone who says something you didn't like and you say, I fucking hate this person. I hope they die. And then they never see it because they're out like living their life. I fucking see it and I respond. I'm giving you a taste of what the internet used to be like and what real life could be again if you bring that attitude outside. Although that might be ambitious. I'm buying into the idea that red card is, is criminally underrated. I never thought I would find myself in that position. I hate it, it's ass. 
Well, you're not playing the game right now, so you can you can ignore it when it shows up in your runs. If it loses it for me on this one, I'll never pick it up ever again. That's for sure. I, I work in extremes. So you're a Sith then? <clears throat> Excuse me, I said I deal in extremes. Siths only deal in absolutes. There's a difference. Also, we don't do that here. We don't. I, it's no disrespect. We're a Dune chat. We're not a Star Wars chat anymore. We say we don't say only a Sith deals in absolutes. We say our plans are measured in centuries. We say Mama Jessica's psychic fetus dipped in Shai Halud's water of life blue oil. 3,000 generations of Bene Gesserit eugenics dipped in Arrakis spice dust oil? You buy any of that guy's chili oil? No, I'm just like... I don't even... Like, listen, for the amount of hot sauce that I consume, I'm actually pretty chill with just Frank's Red Hot. I'm a, I'm a one hot sauce house. I would prefer if it was Cholula. But it's Frank's right now. I don't even remember why. I probably bought it like three years ago. <laughs> Frank's is overrated. Oh, you mean the hot sauce that everybody online says literally just tastes like spicy vinegar? It's overrated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Tell me more. I don't like it. See, now you're 90s maxing. That I respect. You don't have to come up with some contextual argument for like, you know, the... the environment means that Fra like Frank's is problematic because it pays for advertisements that go in front of Fox News or something. You could just be like, it tastes like hot vinegar. That's why I buy it. I like it. This guy loves Fox News. I'll tell you straight up. You think watching Fox News in America is cooked? Wait until you go to like a 60 year old person's house in Canada and see that they got Fox News on. And you're like, what the hell are you even doing, man? It's not. Oh, no, 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 no. Not like this. Not like this. You may have heard that Fox News recently said that Bulletstorm might be the worst game ever made due to its high levels of ultra-violence and disturbing imagery. Well, first off, fuck you, Fox News. And if you think that's motivated by any kind of political affiliation, it's not. I'm a Canadian citizen living in South Korea, so I could really care less if Fox News is a hateful right-wing propaganda peddling bullshit machine. The reason I say fuck you to Fox News, and in fact, Fuck you to any major news network that reports bullshit like this about video games is because I take issue with the terms ultraviolence and disturbing imagery. You know why? Because those complaints could just as easily be lodged against network news. Every single night, the top story on almost every major network is the newest rampage murder death kill in America. If murder was a 12 inch dick, network news would have two hands and a tongue on it every single night. Fox News is murder porn. So do I think Fox News is calling Bulletstorm the worst game ever made because it's worried it's going to corrupt the nation's youth? Not at all. I think they're worried that maybe they have some competition. Alright, we go again. That's fine. I will never take red card again. You know what? Sure. Magic deck. Purple steak all over my brain. Bisexual Dracula be like, excuse me while I kiss this guy. What's your favorite um, frequently misheard lyric in songs? There's, um, excuse me while I kiss this guy. Or um, Paul Simon's Kodachrome. I got an iPhone camera. I want to take a photograph. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Okay. Concrete jum jungle wet dream tomato. That's a classic. Lucy in the sky with Linus. Revved up like a douche. Another runner in the night. Okay. I guess it rains down in Africa. She got electric boobs. What is that from? Is Benny in the Jets? She got electric boobs. I wanna see a movie, I got me living in an allergies, oh. Yeah. Bene Gesserit. Bene, yeah, dude, it would totally work. It would absolutely work. She's got eugenics moves. She's breeding dudes. You know her plans measured in centuries, oh. Bene Gesserit. Bene. Bene. Bene Gesserit! Oh, there's people outside. I'm sorry. 
I knew we could get there. I still got it. I just sometimes I need to think a little bit longer. I'm hot. I'm twerking on the runway. I am a queen card. Queen me. Me playing feminist checkers in 2029? Mm, king me. Ah! They shoot me to death. They, they pull a lever that drops me down a pit into lava. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Come on! The game just started. I'm just a kid, man. And life is a nightmare. You know what I'm realizing is that like, and, and this is this is the real nugget of, of self-awareness in the oh, in the drops of Jupiter bit. I'm not quite ready for kids born after the year 2000 to be like fake nostalgic for the period that I grew up in. But like this is like reality, like it happens to everybody. But then also like God willing, I might even live through like two more echoes of it. You know what I mean? Like it might be like 2050 and people are like nostalgic for the mid 2020s Y2K renaissance. But then I guess like Y2K itself is kind of like a, an echo of a culture that happened earlier. I don't know which one it would be. Maybe some shit from like the Bronze Age or something. Kids are nostalgic for 2005 these days. I know, but like, but it's like, we have to be self-aware though. Cause I'm fake nostalgic for like, you know, the eighties and the early nineties. And I lived through that shit, but I was like two. I'd be like, man, this is fucking, you should have been there when Slanted and Enchanted came out, man. I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? You were one and a half years old. Like I'm, I'm co-opting the nostalgia of like the Gen Xers. And now the, the Gen Alphas are co-opting mine, the nostalgia that should be mine. And I can't even be mad about it because I did the same thing to like my parents' generation. And then my parents' generation did the same thing with like the 1960s. Best pavement album. I want, it's, listen, we don't, we don't, we don't pit three bad bitches against each other, okay? Nothing against Bright in the Corners and nothing against Terror Twilight. They're still great, okay? We don't pit three bad bitches against each other though. Which three? The other three. Slanted and Enchanted, Crooked Rain, and Wowie Zowie. It depends on the mood, bro. Okay, Thomas Jefferson. What does that even mean? Okay, Thomas Jefferson. What does it mean? If you're gonna insult me, I'd love to know what it means. Thomas Jefferson? Okay, Thomas Jefferson, they said? I'm a huge believer that this will save our life one day. No one knows what it means. What does it mean, man? Okay, Thomas Jefferson. Thoughts on the Bluey discourse? I already said this in the Discord, so I apologize because it's like a repeated bit, but this time verbally. The Bluey discourse, I, I predicted a week ago that there would be Bluey discourse in 10 years. What I didn't realize is that the culture moves so fast these days that I was like, accidentally, I was right, but I was wrong, right? I still think for uh, childless adults watching Bluey, not my vibe, but that's not what I want to talk about. I still want to talk about my thesis that in 10 years, the kids who are like seven watching Bluey right now are going to be 17 and they're going to be posting like tweet screeds about how like Bluey is a bad example for people because of the fact that the dad takes too much abuse. You're going to, oh, yeah, does it make you feel bad? Listen, motherfucker, I watched an episode of Bluey last night. It's called, this episode is called Addresses, okay? Bingo and Bluey want to be hairdressers. They pretend to be a hairdresser for the mom. They put her hair in curlers and give her a magazine. For dad, they said, okay, dad, hop in the shower. They hopped, he hopped in the shower. They held the door shut. They cranked on the cold water. It gave him like a five minute cold shower and the dad can't even go like, yahoo hoo. He just has to be like, all right, all right, guys, come on now. Then they took that motherfucker outside and hung him upside down on the swing and covered his ass in fucking flour and then scratched the shit out of him with rakes. And you're gonna be like, why did they do that? They said he had nits in his fur. He was hanging upside down from the swing. They coated him in flour, took tools from the shed and went, 
He walks in at the end of the day. He's like, he can't even speak straight. He's like, hi, hey, mom, how are you? She's fine. She's still got the curlers in her hair. She's reading the magazine. I'm telling you, they are they're setting a bad example for fathers everywhere, man. And that was like, I was, my kids like beating the piss out of me sometimes. And I'm like, I wonder where she got it from. Turn on an episode of Bluey. They're like beating the dad to death. Good dads can take it. See, this is the kind of gaslighting I'm talking about, man. Why did they have to hang him upside down? That's what I'm saying, man. Like, they couldn't have just given him some damn dignity. <laughs> they couldn't have said just stand there. They had to, like, shibari his ass. Like, oh, and yeah, you thought the word frauding was going to break my brain. Shut the fuck up, man. I've been down in the trenches when you were fucking knee-high to a grasshopper. There is one. Yeah, I did mention the one. Yay! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Where he throws away his kids' drawings. But like that one, I did, so he, he, the mom is like, please take these kids away from me. And he's like, I'm going to the dump. Kids shouldn't be there. And she's like, you figure it out, motherfucker. Okay, so he piles the kids into the car with all the garbage. And then he, at the dump, he makes a horrible dad mistake. He's throwing out the kids' drawings in front of the kids. And then the kids are like, why are you throwing out our art? And you can't say like, you know, listen, you're four, like, it, it's, I'll, I'll keep hanging up the new art, but I'm not gonna keep all the art forever, that's crazy. I'm like, Bluey's dad, come on, maybe it's because he's got, like, CTE from all the concussions have, his kids have given him, but, like, you gotta, like, put that shit in a bag and throw it out, or, like, not do it, you can just keep it in the house until you're not taking them to the dump with you, and then throw it out. Plus, like, I don't know, should that shit be recycled? Are we canceling Bluey's dad? I don't know, you tell me, Chad. I know you can recycle paper. Can you recycle paper that has paint on it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, there's all sorts of like weird fucking folklore rules on recycling. Like, you know, I, I grew up in one of those houses where it was like you can recycle the jar, but you throw out the lid. Is that real? Or should you be keeping the lid on the jar when you put it in the glass bin? Or like you, when you get the spring mix in the plastic box with the soft plastic you have to throw out the soft plastic lid but you put the hard plastic into the fucking then i don't even get me started like all this shit that you buy on amazon these days it always says please recycle me on it and i'm like you can't just print that shit on your product with like ink like is it or is it not recyclable i'll put it in the recycling bin but like if the recycling truck comes by and leaves all of my shit because this thing's not recyclable, I'm going to be pissed off, man. And then everything's like, you, please, if you have a problem with our product, don't give us a three-star review. Talk to our AI assistant again. We'll sort it out for you. Man, fuck you. I'm, this is a straw, man. I made up like all this in my head. That's why I just throw everything in a big garbage bag and put it in a drum and light it on fire. Life's too short, man. I would love another Joker space. Let's give it a chance. Then why do you recycle jokes? Holy, I got, they, you got me. I see. People think I hate chat. I don't hate chat. I just, I, I think that you got, you got some zingers in you and I'm just trying to provide the right environment to get them out. You went off with that one. Straight. Dracula taking back shots for the first time ever. I don't know if there's enough meat on that bone. That's not my impression. That's like, I just, I just don't know if there's... Like, what, what would the joke even be? He's, ex he's experiencing his homosexual awakening. It's not a joke. I'm sure it happens to lots of people. I'm not the right kind of guy to write that story, okay? You'd have to ask Corey about that one. See? St okay, okay, we hate this guy. Kill him. Let's kill him with hammers. You can get away with anything. Get it twisted. You can be homophobic towards your straight friends. You can do anything. What was I saying? No, you can't be homophobic towards your gay friends. That's like insanely problematic. But you can definitely be homophobic towards your straight friends. Not with your straight friends. That's problematic. But if your friend is straight, I think you can make fun of him for being gay. As long as you're not actually homophobic. If you're actually homophobic, you're not allowed. 
Prezzo, can I get a pass on this one, please? I need I need a representative. Can I get grandfathered in on this one? It's it's a good faith joke, okay? It's not a joke. I'm not trying to insult a marginalized group of individuals. I know straight people have been through a lot lately. You know what's crazy? So I made that I made that tweet. Well, I replied to the librarian's tweet. I was like, what happened to all the bronies? Not even in a in a negative way, but I was like, literally like one in four people that replied to me on Twitter in 2014 had a brony avatar. And then when I made the tweet, a lot of people replied and they're like, we're still here, NL. We're just furries now or like we're trans now. And then I look at their profile and I see that they're like 25. And I was like, why the fuck were you tweeting me when you were 15? You're trying to like start an argument with me when you were 15 years old. I get that you're a little kid, but like, can you apologize for that now? Because, like, I was operating under the assumption that everybody on the internet was, like, my age. And I was replying to communist brony in good faith. Now I realize you're you're doing that shit between homeroom and math class. Like, we were not... That conversation should not have happened. It doesn't make any sense, man. That's on you? No, the fuck it isn't. I was in my lane. You were tweeting me shit like your actions in this War of Mine video, episode number 17, were really problematic for these reasons. I hope you'll address this in a statement later. And I was like, oh shit, this is all new to me. They must be arguing in good faith. I didn't realize you just, like, you know, were 15. It's fine. But, like, I mean, okay, I'll admit it's partly on me, but, like, it's also, like, fully on you. Like, there's 150% blame to go around. I'll take 50, you take, you take the 100. What message would you send to the 15-year-olds watching you now? <laughs> You're not gonna like it. Stay in school? That's all, I, I, I don't have anything else. What do you want me to grow up? No, like, I, I, would, I would almost say the opposite. I would say, don't be in a rush to grow up. Stay in school, don't do drugs. Yes, don't do drugs. But if you're going to do them, wait until you're at least, like, close to 25, because that's when your brain's, like, fully developed. And at that point, listen, okay? There's everything in life comes with trade-offs. You should not microwave plastic and then eat out of the plastic that you microwaved if you're under the age of 60. You're getting lots of free radicals when you do that. If you're 80, that shit takes time to create compound interest in your body. You're not going to be here forever. You might as well, man. You might as well be... Uh, go for it. Everything in moderation, including moderation. I do disagree, though, when people say things that are like, when I'm 80, I'm going to like, fuck it. Sometimes people say, like, when I'm 60, I'm go fuck it, I'm going to like do every drug under the sun. And I'm like, my parents are 60 years old, and they're like, you know, going on hikes and shit like that. They're not like, like the alien from Men in Black 1 that was trapped in that dude's chest. <laughs> like you're gonna be fucking in bed like I can barely move fucking bring out the the crocodile man like no it's not oh I gotta do crystal meth like are you serious you're probably just gonna want like a sandwich and some hard candy that's what I think I would want honestly anyway what was I that was with advice for the for current 15 year olds I don't know I honestly I, I have how would I know man the world moves so fast these days. I have no idea what it's like to be 15 now. And I sure as shit don't know what it's going to be like to be 30 in fucking 2039. You might be living on Mars by then. You're probably going to be living in Ohio. Ohio? I'm already halfway there. The fuck does that mean? Where are you, where are you living? Halfway from where to, to where, man? Kalid? No, but you're 150% of the way there. I don't know if I could give real... Like, I can't give advice to you if you're 15. But I can give advice to my 15-year-old self. Skip less class in university. Civ 4 will always be there when you get a chance. <laughs> you will have free time. Go. It's only four years. I, I graduated. I even graduated with honors. But I could have done a lot better in school which would have given me easier opportunities after school instead of giving me a, a, a period of time where there was anyway. Now, the, the malaise was transmuted into something productive, which is great, but there's really just a lottery ticket. Like, I got insanely lucky. My actual advice is to do computer science. I'm not trying to give you, like, a... Um, 
Oh, fantastic. <coughs> it's useless. I'm not trying to give you a, a crisis, okay? But like, aren't we in, aren't we at like the start of a computer science bubble? Were there, I saw like a, a news headline like a couple weeks ago that was like 61% of undergrads at this university are now computer science grads. Like, aren't we reaching the point where we're like, you had it good for a, a long time. That's why I started to learn programming, I don't know, nine years ago at this point as well. It was like, basically, all you have to do is go to class and graduate and you'll be in a good position. But like, now I'm like, fucking everybody got the memo. Don't we need like some gas fitters or something? No, it's still true. Okay, okay. You know what we need? We need more idea guys, man. You know what I thought by the way? When, when I was growing up, I thought the world was like, if you need a, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. If you need a plumber, your toilet breaks, you pick up a phone, you call 911, you say, I need a plumber. They give you 10,000 resumes and you pick the A plus triple S tier plumber of your dreams. They're over your house in two seconds. In real life, when you, when something in your house breaks and you need a plumber, you're on their fucking terms, man, which makes me think that they're calling all the shots right now. You're calling, you got 12 plumbers, you call the first one, I'm fully booked. Oh, plus we're in Cuba for the next six weeks. You, you have to go down the list, you call like nine plumbers, and then finally the ninth one is like, you know, oh, I'll be there in two weeks, and you're like, thank you, thank you, sir, thank you. Meanwhile, if you want, if you ever tweet anything about like computer programming, you get like a thousand people in your mentions that are like, I'll do it for you for free. Now that's merely one anecdote, but it scares me from a supply demand standpoint. Why are you drinking off camera? Are you hiding something? If Western family wants to get some free promotion for their pineapple splash, naturally flavored pineapple sparkling water, they know where to reach me. All I'm gonna say is today's price is not yesterday's price. They just did? Well, in three seconds, I could just say it tastes like sewage. What's the word for that? When you threaten slander against the corporation unless they give you money? That's something I don't, like right now, we, as streamers, we have to wait for like sponsors to come in and then be like, no, it's a mobile game. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure your product gave me Campylobacter. No, 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 no. Then eventually you get one and you're like, let's go. What if you just started being a criminal? What if you sent an email to Coca-Cola and you were like, hey, give me 10,000 bucks or I'm going to say that your product gave me chronic diarrhea and popcorn lung on stream. You have 24 hours to respond. They will assassinate you with a drone strike. Okay, what about like uh, Topo Chico or something like that? Somebody without their own private military? The streets are saying it's extortion. The streets are saying it could land me in federal prison. Oh, maybe comedy really is illegal. Topo Chico is owned by Coca-Cola. All right. I didn't know that. I did not know that. Based and not campfire pills. What deck is it? Oh, this is Crystal Ball deck. Crystal Ball. Crystal Ball. Remember that video? Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Christian Bale and Christian Bale. The Silva. Christian Bale. And Christian Bale. Christian Bale. And Christian Bale. 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 You don't remember that one, huh? Okay. You'll get him next bit. You think so? One file of... Oh, he's doing it again. Come on. One file of Franklin's Roiling Crimson Tonic. A pound of wing from Dinosaur Fowl. Why is Mama Liz funny? I, I genuinely don't get it. Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker in Joker 2. You genuinely wouldn't get it. <laughs> There's nothing to get. There's something to get. Mama Liz is actually, um, sure, I mean, it's a real person who made a, really ch a real chili oil, but it's also a reference to the Elizabethan era of the British monarchy, an era that was um, fraught 
with torture, but also from that torture sprung art such as Shakespeare and the Globe Theater, which you may recognize from Civilization V. There's a lot of layers in it. So when, in a way, it's a subversion of the relationship between colonizer and the colonized, because he's dipping a pepper that originally grew in the United States, which, which was a British colony, into Mama Liz's chili oil. And I don't think I need to tell you what that represents. It's kind of like a how's your father, like we, we Jeet Kune Do and flipped you. So it's not just like, oh, isn't it funny that he's using a funny voice and eating spicy food? It's also the ultimate American middle finger to the colonial empire that also birthed them. It's like that resentment between mother and child and child and mother, but at the same time, you're still family. And it's, it's all that wrapped up in 15 glorious seconds of TikTok. And that's what makes that the best platform on earth, people. The Webster's Dictionary defines Mama Liz as... Uh, 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 sorry, Kawhi Leonard laugh. I just like the funny voice. Well, then it's great because I think that that's like, uh, it's like the hangover part one, okay? So yeah, there's laugh out loud funny stuff. Probably some of the funniest stuff ever put uh, in the cinema is present there. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, there's lots of stuff to think about, about like um, arrested development, permanent adolescents and middle-aged men who are constantly afraid of commitment society's relationship with a poison such as alcohol and in particular glorifying binge drinking even as it has harmful physical effects i mean doug passed out on the fucking roof bro in las vegas that dude is jerky now he was there until like 8 p.m the next day he is dead he got cooked man he had no shade he fucking died why did they ruin some of the emotes? What are you talking about? You talking about PogChamp again? I'm just, I'm not taking a stand in the culture war. I'm just saying Komodo hype is not it. It hurts when you show up, you know what? In a streamer's chat and you type Pog and then you get um, Pog Bones, which I don't even know what that is. Like it's from Dave the Diver or something. And then there's, uh, Pog Champ, which is now Komodo hype, and you're like, I mean, as soon if I come to your chat, it's not even your fault. If I come to your chat and I drop Pog autocomplete and it becomes Pog Bones, I can't show my face in your chat ever again. Like I'm embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed on your behalf. I'm in, now people have seen me with my verified check mark typing Pog Bones. It's like calling your teacher mom or something like that. Like it's just it's just not gonna fly. Remember that episode of Recess? I lived that episode of Recess, bro. I was the kid who called the teacher mom. How did it happen? I don't know. It's like I, I was eight. I only knew like seven women and they all occupied like a similar role in my life of teaching and nurturing me. Public school kids be like, I called my teacher mom. Homeschool kids be like, I called my teacher a bitch. Is this anything? Is this anything? Spoiled kids calling their mom a bitch, even though their mom sacrificed everything to try to give them the best life possible. They say oh, the plus twos are flowing, bro. A few minus twos from homeschooled kids probably thinking, doesn't everybody call their mom a bitch? No, we fucking don't, bro. If we did, we regret it for the rest of our lives. It's a detestable impulse. That's a Russell Peters bit. No shot, I stole a Russell Peters bit. I'm not, I'm not getting into it, but I would be surprised. <laughs> a very different style of joking, I think. Did you see that Elon Musk was tweeted? We just had our first kid. Do you have any advice for us, Elon? And he said, be careful what they teach your kid in school. The kid is fucking one day old, brother. What are you talking about? Like, obviously, it's an insane thing to say in the first place. Is like your number one parenting tip. But to someone who just had a... A, a little baby? What are you talking about, man? Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to bring... I'm just... Who asks Elon Musk anyway? Well, he does have 11 kids. So I can see why. I didn't say anything else. All, I, all, I, all I've said to this point was facts, okay? 
If you got a problem with that, look in the mirror. Now, chat's saying some things that are not so nice. Maybe I agree with them. Maybe I don't agree with them. But I'm not putting them into the record on my to be to be encased in a, a digital clip that could be shared. No, of course not. That's they, they can choose what to say and what not to say. I'm going to exercise a little bit of restraint. I did watch the Conan O'Brien Hot Ones, by the way. I thought it was good. I don't have anything else to say. I thought it was good. Good video. I don't know. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> he went crazy. He did. Am I the only person who thinks maybe Hot Ones would be better if they took away the wings and the sauce? I'm not, I'm not trying for like a hot take, but... <laughs> You're not the only one, but you're probably in the minority. Okay, all right. He did play with the form. I got nothing but respect for the goat. How well do you think you'd do on Hot Ones? I think it would be a good interview. Um, but I, I'm, I mean, it would be hot. I'm sure it would be hot. I'm sure the food would be very spicy. So what, you just want two dudes sharing a glass of milk? I'm, <laughs> listen, I didn't think it out, although I didn't expect to be persecuted for my beliefs these are not easy stakes y'all these are not easy stakes me at gordon ramsay's steakhouse old man voice you know i've been there how was it it was pretty good i can't i mean i complain about the price but what do you expect even better than the keg i mean i'm being careful about what i say i would say that gordon ramsay's steakhouse in Las Vegas was probably better than the keg. I think the keg is like pretty good. It might be like the last good Canadian chain restaurant. What about Earl's? I think the keg might be like the last good Canadian chain restaurant. I'm not like super anti Earl's, but like it's not, it wouldn't be my first choice. Let's put it that way. Milestones? Are you crazy, brother? You know, one time I went to Milestones with my wife. She ordered popcorn shrimp appetizer. They served her as shrimp on a bed of popcorn. And then I think she got like pad thai or something for her main. And then the noodles were like this long. Like whoever cooked it obviously like pulled up the noodles and was like snip, snip, snip. Like people are complaining about the noodles being long. You're lying. I swear to God. And th this milestones then went out of business like three years later. But like it was, it's bad. Milestones, not good. At least that one. This is the same bit as grilled salad. It's not a bit. This is some shit that happened to me in my life. Also, I know we've talked about the grilled lettuce from the, the Gordon Ramsay show in the past. That's like one of the things on Kitchen Nightmares that he made fun of that I was like, I bet that's probably fucking good, man. It's a little bit non-traditional to put the romaine straight on the charcoal, but like it, it looked pretty. I would eat that salad, no doubt. Hey, Anel, were you alive when Montana's had barrels full of peanuts they'd bring around as appetizers? Um, I don't think I ever went to Montana's when it was like that, but definitely I have that exact same story from Eastside Mario's, or as they call it in Canada, Eastside Mario's, a bada boom bada bing. Restaurants, like if you weren't alive in the 90s, it's not your fault, okay? But even shitty restaurants used to be kind of fun. You know what Eastside Mario's? You, while you were waiting for a table, they had shelled peanuts. You could pick them up and you ate the shells and you, or you ate the peanut, you threw the shell on the floor. Then at the end of the meal, you, the, the person who paid the bill spun a fucking wheel and the wheel had shit on it that was like, you know, $20 gift card, free appetizer next time, like buy one, get one free entree, whatever. Take a baguette and Caesar salad home. But then one of the things on the wheel was you gotta sweep up the fucking peanut shells, man. They can't do that shit anymore because they're like, I don't know, because it's owned by a private equity corporation or like the health department would get pissed off or something. It used to be like a game show and like some bad pasta. I mean, enough assholes probably said I'm not doing that and ruined it for everybody. No, I'm radicalized. What ruined it for everybody is Eastside Mario's decided they didn't want to be a fun restaurant anymore. They wanted to have six locations in every Canadian town over 50,000 people, which required like streamlining the business and no longer were they in the business of providing a good time. Instead, it's you get the same eggplant parmigiana no matter which city you're in. Then they got sold to like a Brazilian private equity firm or something like that. And now it's not even about the franchisees making money. It's just about siphoning it up to the top. 
So no, you can't have fun anymore. You got a $24 French onion soup that comes from a Cisco bag that they kept in the back. And you don't get to spin the wheel or eat the peanuts anymore. Some dude in Sao Paulo is loving every minute of it. What do you think about Moxie's? I have a question about bruschetta, okay? When I was a kid, a teenager, 15, 16, anytime me and the lads went to Moxie's, we'd get bruschetta, and I was like, this is the tastiest thing in the, on planet Earth. Garlic bread with pico de gallo essentially on top of it, it's delicious. Went a long time not really eating that much Italian food. Started going out to more Italian restaurants because one of the only foods my daughter actually likes is, is pasta. And every time I'm at a new Italian restaurant, I'm like, we'll start with the bruschetta, okay? Every bruschetta I've had at real Italian restaurants since then paled in comparison to my mind's eye memory of Moxie's. Now, I know that Moxie's is bad. It's the same bagged stuff that I just got on Eastside Mario's for doing. So is it that I didn't know what I was tasting back then? Or, I don't know, man. I don't know. I got bruschetta in Toronto. They put cheese on it. Based, because cheese tastes good. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Is it fair to say your proportion of unemployed viewers has risen since Germa's retirement? Look who's talking, brother. We're talking about ice cream. Something downright presidential. You come in here with, like, some meta streamer commentary? When we have the mandate of heaven right now? Rude ass. Plus, he's not retired. He's semi-retired. He's doing... He's streaming now and then, and he's doing cooked events for... Uh, uh, mogul. Behind the scenes, man. For off-brand. Why are they trying to pit two bad bitches against each other? That puzzle stream was not it. It honestly must be exhausting to be Jerma, man. Dude was probably like... I, I, he just... I'm just gonna go live do a puzzle. People are analyzing it like it's the fucking Godfather Part 3. His puzzle arc. Mmm. Little bit of a dip in quality for that one. No wonder he's semi-retired, man. I'd want out too. There's <laughs> too much scrutiny for this medium, man. You guys are pushing the goats to the margins. What are you doing? Then he, he re says he's retiring and he's... Viewers are coming into my chat. Hey, what do you think of the Germa puzzle stream? Like, just let the dude rest, man. Fubar 1 and 2 are both worth watching. I actually think Fubar 2 is a little bit better, which is controversial. It's very rare for a comedy sequel to surpass the original. I think Fubar 2 did it. Fubar 1 is like 77 minutes long. It's an easy watch. Fubar 2 is more like a traditional comedy film, but I think they did it, man. I think they did a great job. The more I see FUBAR 2, and I've probably seen it like eight times at this point, the, the more I think they nailed it. 87% audience score. 90? Run the FUBAR 2, 90 on Rotten Tomatoes, vindicated. All right, all right, let's watch this film. Let's watch this film with popcorn. I'm, I need a hit, man. I'm so desperate to go viral again. I need a fucking hit. I'll do anything. There's 11,000 people here. There's 11,000 fucking people here and nobody's tapping the screen. There's 11,000 people. Okay, anyway. Thanks for the follow. You guys are great. Oh, man. Takes me back. It's a perfect time for a straight build, bro. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It was cool. It was cool. You're right. Ride the bus early. That'd be nice. Green Joker early. That'd be crazy. Hey, it's not so bad. Jumbo Buffoon. Pretty good. Oh. Listen, I gave Who said that? <laughs> P-Tone. Congratulations. You've just been made VIP. Mod. Let's not go crazy. I'm not trying to ruin my stream. <laughs> Get it twisted around here clairvoyant individuals get VIP. Craziest thing about Harry Potter, they sent that motherfucker to the train station by himself to board the train. He was like nine years old. People my own age will like go to another country on vacation 
where the country that they visit also speaks the same language as the country they left from. And they'll be like, uh, I'm just going to take a taxi. I don't want to bother learning how to use the subway system. Harry Potter was fucking nine, bro. He was nine years old. I would love four enhanced numbered kids. Kids? Cards. <laughs> I don't want enhanced or <laughs> numbered kids. I'm okay with one. I thought he was 11. Mickey Mouse American version of the Philosopher's Stone. In Canada, he was five years old. Hmm. So people got... Sorry. You ever listen to Randy Newman on Charitably? What are you talking about? You never, you never heard of Randy Newman. Oh, the guy who did You Got a Friend in Me? No, the dude who made the scathing anti-short person song. Short People. That song is wild. Yeah, you couldn't write short people these days. It's too wholesome. All the songs these days are about killing people. Randy Newman is a gazillionaire from all that crap he coughed out. It's not crap. He's a good artist, man. Even, like, you got a friend in me. Kind of a... a you, I, you were there is what I'm trying to say, okay? Kids movies didn't get songs like that in 1995, all right? So Randy Newman is good, but Hey There Delilah is bad. Me and the other successful 35-year-olds are taking your comment out of context. We're taking a screenshot of it. We're going to Appy Hour at Earl's. We're ordering kimchi margaritas and we're laughing at you. Yes. Yes, Randy Newman's over clears Hey There Delilah by the Plain White Tees. I don't know, by a factor of 35 million, maybe something like that. What's a kimchi marg? Obviously, you guys have never been to Earl's. So they love to do that. It's chicken tender bibimbap. So if you're not familiar, bibimbap is kind of like it's this Korean dish that means like um, mixed sauce. And then we just went ahead and threw some of our kicking chicken tenders in there too. Then we added some spicy mayo on top just to make it really nice and authentic. We served it with a slice of garlic bread on the side. Sorry, I ate a protein bar. What flavor? Kirkland. Those are good. I like them. Um, my daughter used to eat them for breakfast. She enjoyed them for breakfast. Um, then she stopped eating them for breakfast. She said she doesn't like them anymore. You know what she eats for breakfast now? One untoasted slice of white bread. That's my girl. You might think, like, if you looked into our windows at breakfast time, you would think that we're neglectful parents. But, like, she genuinely doesn't want anything for breakfast except one untoasted piece of white bread. No, no butter, no jam, no peanut butter, no nothing, man. <laughs> Satanic. I'm always like, do you want, like, I could cut up some fruit. You could throw the fruit in some yogurt or something like that. She's like, nah, I just, just bread. And it's, it's pissing me off because she's stealing all my bad habits. Now, whenever she doesn't want something, she crosses her arms in front of her in the shape of an X. I'm like, can I toast that for you? She hits me with the X arms. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> I should have solved all of my annoying habits before I had a kid, man. Aren't your bad habits streaming? Yeah, maybe streaming piss from my dick into my pants when I'm on the bus, bitch. Why don't you just go in the toilet? Oh, so everybody has toilets now, huh? Wash my hands after I go to the bathroom? Oh, can you buy me some soap? 12-year-olds on Twitter who said they were born in the year 1995 so they could get an account and join the, the world's public square. I'll have you know, some of us don't get enough allowance to spend on hand soap. There's something there. There she goes with the blurt blurtation, pissing away in the congregation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought it was X, but she talks like Y. Reminds me I'm just a funny guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look to the left and she dips to the right. I'm afraid that she might see me as a finger licking chicken eater. Wants to do it or two. Afraid the fly solo never did land. Hey, everybody's hero. Thanks for the gifted subscription. Thank you. Did you hear the Conan O'Brien story from Hot Ones where he said that he climbed on top of a water buffalo, 
before the show once and the thing bucked him off and he almost broke his hip on the floor and then it tried to gore him to death. That's crazy, man. That happened in like 2000 and must have been like 2013 or something like that. That's not like a 1980s story. Imagine he died like that. I say this, Conan is my goat in many ways. It would be a funny way to die in hindsight. Funniest guy ever dies in water buffalo goring accident on the set of his own show. I'm happy he's alive, but like that it if he had to go at that day, that would have been a better way to go. Well, for us, it would have been a better way to go than like hit by a bus or something. Imagine Jimmy Fallon having like a moment of silence on his show because Conan O'Brien got killed by a water buffalo the day before. Jimmy Fallon's like 45, just fucking don't laugh, 44, 44, 43, 42. <laughs> I don't mind him, honestly. I, I mean, I don't, I don't stand up for Jimmy Fallon, but I don't mind him. Just looking at Poke Doku now. Sino Huzui, baby. Austin Powers translated into a foreign language. I don't know, I don't know any of this. My name impression... Oof, das Americaner, speaking about Regenbogen Struzel. Rainbow Sprinkles. The bit's growing on me. We're working on it. It's, we're still working on it. At some point, it has to be xenophobic. Bro, Canada and Germany are chill. Come on, oh, I'll come over, you come over. We'll give you some sushi, you give us some sausage. We'll clink our steins together and sing some songs. We'll have a good time. Don't worry about it. you. Come on. As a German, I allow it. You can't be offended. It's banter, man. It's not like we're making a joke at Uzbekistan's expense. They took offense, and honestly, they should take offense. But we're talking about Canada-Germany violence here in 2024. You ever hear of male bonding? Mon impression of la Canadienne. Écoutez-vous, a rainbow. You ever realize Kyrgyzstan kind of shaped like the USS Enterprise? Singapore. 3,000 kilometers. Let's go crazy. Seychelles, by the seashore. That's colder, okay? That's the coldest of all. Marshall's Island. That's warmer, but not by much. Tasmania? Nope. Tanzania? <laughs> I don't think that's right. Australia. That's warmer. It's the warmest of all. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Easter Island? No, fuck. Christmas Island? Oh, American Samoa? <laughs> Vanuatu? It's colder. It's, fur it's, fur it's further away from Vanuatu than it is from Singapore or Australia. Micronesia. Federated States of Micronesia. We're, we're triangulating. <laughs> um, uh, 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 Timor and Lest. Timor Lest. That's <laughs> I don't know. I need your help. I don't know what I don't know what we're doing here. I've I've used all my ammunition. Palau. A mystery country is Palau. That's tough, man. That's they got me today. They got me. I thought I was cooking with Micronesia, Brunei, uh, Timor Leste. Like I I was racking my brain for the usual suspects of of Pacific Islands, but. That is a, that's a tough one. But you know what? It's a tough one. We learn something. Do you believe in Pangria? 
I do. I do. This is a fucking lung. <coughs> this is your lung, bro. I don't know what the hell. He's got a fucking snake's tongue. I don't know what you are. Assuming this is like a body of water. I'm just going to throw out like a Pakistan. I don't know. It's Africa. Africa. Mozambique. How about that? <coughs> South of Mo... It's Antarctica! Ha! Huh? South of... 6,000 kilometers south of Mozambique. There was nowhere else to go, man. This is not a country. It's not a country. I mean, I'm not mad. It's funny, but it's not a country. Peter Postlewaite. Daniel Day-Lewis, Jake Gyllenhaal, Emma Thompson, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal. I know what I must do. I know what I, I, I got to do. I know what 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 I got to do. Okay. You need to be Wahlberg maxing. You need to be Wahlberg maxing. Conor McGregor, the fighter. Oh, fuck. What have I done? No, 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 no. <laughs> you say the notorious? Oh, God. Um, probably go with Floyd and Money Mayweather. Oh, Jesus Christ. I guess if I had to, I'd go KSI and the Paul's Primes for Success. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Okay, Jake Paul. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not getting any better, man. It's not getting any better. I guess I'll go... <laughs> what the fuck is this filmography? I'm going mainstream. Okay, okay. Jason Schwartzman, I Heart Huckabees. I Huckabees? Huckabees, Huckabees. To Dustin Hoffman. To fucking Last Chance Harvey. To Emma Thompson. To In the Name of the Father. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, man. Thank you, Jake Paul. Anybody else get this line? Is this a unique line? Roadhouse to Conor McGregor. To The Notorious. To Conor McGregor. To Floyd Money Mayweather. To Floyd Mayweather Jr. To KSI and the Pauls Primes for Success. To Jake Paul. All I'm going to say is everybody does. They try to do something unique. As soon as they see another motherfucker do something unique, they say, no, you did it wrong. You should have done it the same as everybody else. Sad. It's a sad story. Nuclear. Spelunky. More recent than 2008. We got some yellows on this one. Mm, the Evil Within 2. Single player only game between 08 and 2017. That is isometric. Probably. Rimworld. Oh! Sometimes it just works. Game they'll guess in three, people will tell you it's luck. Don't get it twisted. It is not luck. It's skill. Guess the movie title of the day. Isn't that special? Hmm. It's a real tough one, unless you're a Ridley head. Hmm. A, an R-rated 1979 science fiction horror movie beloved by all. Hmm. I guess it could be Alien. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Mr. O'Bannon. Thank you, Mr. Scott, Miss Weaver, Mr. Holm, Mr. Hurt, and the various other people involved. Mr. Geiger, thank you so much. Ripley. <laughs> the war we fought on LV-421. What a war it was. They said nuke it from orbit. We said we can't be sure. 
We can't be sure. Newt may still be down there. We can't nuke it yet. Paul Reiser said, hang on. Paul, you remember him mad about you, Helen Hunt. You remember. Face eaten by a xenomorph, I believe. Today I'd like to go from Cambodia to Egypt while only traveling along the coast. We are going to be traveling through Israel by necessity. I think you will go through Jordan. No, Jordan is so small, bro. You probably go Syria. No, but it's so close. Iraq? I'm not on the coast, bro. <laughs> Chat, where am I? Where am I coastless? Syria has no coast. Okay, thank you. Lebanon? Lebanon has no coast. Cyprus? What? Oh, you're missing one on the south? I, I've got to connect. Oh, I see. I got to connect this way. Oh, brother. I got to. It has to be the same coast the whole way? Okay, you go Saudi Arabia then. I was flip-flopping coast to coast, man. Then you got to go Jordan. And then you're there, right? Oh, brother. <laughs> Bahrain? Oh, come on. <laughs> Kuwait? Kuwait? How the fuck am I not connected, bro? Malaysia? Okay, that shit is filling in. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, I have to keep this line unbroken. Okay, I understand. You can't skip coast to coast. I understand. I understand now. So, because what I was going to do is, like, be, like, boom, Sri Lanka, and then it connects, but it doesn't connect. So, you have to connect here, which is Bangladesh, and then this is all going to fill in. And then we got to go Yemen and Oman and the UAE. What's the problem? What's the problem? Brother, the lines, the lines connect. They're, ad they're adjacent to each other. Do they though? What, what do you mean they don't, con is, is this another country? Or is this, because when I mouse over it, it says Saudi Arabia. So why does that shit say Saudi Arabia and it even makes a bold outline if it's not Saudi Arabia? It doesn't, it, it doesn't make any sense, man. Okay, I'm just going to be honest. I think they overcooked the weekly. There's too many like weird rules. If there's a you, just me as a play tester, as a play tester, there's some UX issues. Like um, I still I, I I get now that like no I don't actually. Why why was this not filled in? But it's Saudi Arabia because it's on the coast. Yeah, but it's on the coast. Like, it's, it's, it's filled in now. It's touching the coast. Because the coast goes through Qatar. But these are, these are touching, though. I don't understand. Like, can't I just... Like, I'm on the beach, right? And then, like, here's the border. Don't I just walk? I guess it's not even a border because it's the same country. Don't I just walk and then there's just, like, a kind of like an island next to me? I'm, it's not a limmy bit. I'm like, from my, from my understanding, this is the coast. It's a peninsula. Well, I, in my personal opinion then, zoom in, enhance, please. Enhance, 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 enhance. Enhance, enhance. They won't let me enhance anymore. They shouldn't have a fucking space here that seems to indicate that it is not connected to the landmass. 
Go on Google Maps. You, you're providing a map to me as we speak. Why should I have to go somewhere else to source my maps when I'm at the map store? This one, maybe it's just this weekly. Me personally, I think this, this one weekly had a little UX UI issue. That's all I'm saying. Might, might just be a Qatar, Saudi Arabia thing, but I wouldn't worry about it because it's the last time you're ever going to see the travel weekly ever again. 9,000 people in chat understood. Honestly, 8,100 people here can't tie their shoes. There are 900 people who are very vocal. Probably 50 of them understood. And the other remainder were merely just echoing what the VIP said. That's the way mob dynamics work. That's why I got to come out with the fucking fists out here. Because if I, if I go, oh, sorry, chat, you're right. They just kill you and eat you. You got to fight for your life. You got to scare the rest of them. You got to go Rorschach mode on them. You got to go, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. I don't think it was, I, I think, you know what? Just for that puck doku, you're getting puck doku. Uh, I think the fuck not, you trick ass bitch. You asked for it, you're getting it. Here you go. Emerge, a verb meaning to become manifest. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. Fantastically, a adverb meaning in a fantastic manner. Fan Rapids, a noun. We're going to the moon, man. Infirm, a adjective. Clipper, a noun meaning one that clips. God's strongest soldiers. Cautioned, a verb meaning to advise caution. Enunciate. A verb meaning to make a definite or systematic statement of. That one, I, I was 80% confidence on that one. Etude. A noun meaning a. Petrifying. An adjective meaning overwhelmingly. Fr you don't hear that anymore, petrifying. It's an antediluvian ass word. Gluttonous. An adjective meaning marked by or. Grimaces. A noun meaning a fake. Meringue. A noun meaning a dessert. Ooh, we're popping. Floruit. A noun meaning a period of flourishing, as of a person or movement. Borrowed from Latin floruit, meaning prospered, flourished from florer to bloom, prosper. Floruit. A noun meaning this a period of flourishing. This is for all the marbles right here. As of a person. Oh, <laughs> no shot. That looked right to me, man. Rorschach. An adjective yeah, meaning I'm not locked in here with you. You're lo oh. Merrimack. A geographical name meaning river 110 miles. Think I'm not Canadian? I know all about the Merrimack, brother. Oh, I forgot to see Rorschach. I thought this was a captcha before the actual game. POV, you are on 10 grams of edible cannabis. Floruet? Come on. 10 grams? I meant 10 uh, micrograms. Whatever. Allison Bree? And me in three years. It's probably Horse Girl. It's probably Pitch Perfect. I don't know. I don't know shit that Alice and Bree. Wait, Mike and Dave need wedding dates? Okay. Will Arnett, Alice and Bree, and me in three years. Um, um, baby Mama, due date. Due date. Due date. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Elizabeth Banks, Will Arnett, Alice and Bree, and me in three years. Lego? The Lego movie? That's the Lego movie, guys. His name's Emmett Brukowski. It must be like Animated Movie Week at acted.com. I can't wipe the frown on my face when I say it, but... It's Chris Pratt Week here. POV, you're a Hollywood executive. It's Chris Pratt Week at Universal Studios. We put that in everything. Frank's Red Hot Sauce crossover. Yeah, yeah, we all know Chris Pratt is playing Mao Zedong in the Cultural Revolution movie from Disney. The, what I want to know is who the fuck is playing Chiang Kai-shek? Because I've always thought that that was like a Joel Edgerton role, like he was built to play that role. Who the fuck is playing Chiang Kai-shek and Dr. Sat Yun Sen and who the fuck is playing Deng Xiaoping, Okay. The Rock is playing Deng Xiaoping? Oh, brother. 
Okay, but we could still, if we can get Bob Balaban as Dr. Sun Yat Sen, we could still save this man. Balaban has been hair maxing for this role his whole life. He's already got the glasses. Please, Bob Balaban is Dr. Sun Yat Sen. Oh, Kevin Hart. Oh, brother. This is a ham sandwich, man. Are they mocking me? After I complained about like food guesser being too hard, they're hitting me with a bologna sandwich. Bologna, bread, mayonnaise, mustard, lettuce, and tomato. Um, the United States of America. Bologna sandwich. It can be found on the menus of diners, delis, and sandwich shops across the United States. Let me stop you right there, chat GPT. No, it fucking can't. I'm not saying it doesn't exist at all on the menus of diners and delis and sandwich shops, but it's, it's going extinct, okay? It's very rare these days you go to a, a restaurant and they're like, they got a bologna sandwich on the menu. This is fucked. What the fuck am I looking at? It's an eldritch horror. It's one of those AI-generated images that's like, Hey, check, can you help me find this thing in my room? But then, like, your eyes can't actually make an object out of anything? What is this? Barley flour, water, and salt. What's the red, man? <laughs> What's the red? What is it? What's the red, man? It looks like a damn blister. I mean, some countries got to take the fall. I'm sorry. I'm just going to start me out with the with a Ghana, maybe, and then we'll see where we... That's cool, okay? Traditionally, a stiff porridge-like substance in a round shape with a hole in the middle filled with red peppers. Oh, you might describe those as ingredients, maybe, then. That's just my two cents. Oh, no? Okay, never mind. Not that it would have changed my guess necessarily, but Turkey? I don't know. No offense, Turkey. Name is Genfo. Yemen? That's hot. Saudi Arabia. That's warm. Oman? That's warm. It's Genfo from Eritrea and Ethiopia. I mean that the picture there is it's it's everything about it. It's the the JPEGness of it. It's the red pool in the center. But the thing that really triggers the amygdala for me is the forks floating in space. I get that they're under something, so it's like elevating the fork, but it looks like some alien food. I'm not, it's not the food, it's the framing of the image. And like the, the fact that all the forks are in it in like a circle, like it's like a ritualistic, like a cult thing or something. I don't know, man. Squid, pork, soy sauce, pear juice. Pear juice usually equals Korean. I mean, I guess this, this could just be like a simple Ojinga Dupbop or something like that. I, this looks like South Korea to me. Osam Bulgogi, my mistake, my mistake. By the way, any, any native Korean speakers in chat? Not my ass getting lit up, okay? Because I, uh, someone at, at our in-laws says, what's the Korean word for octopus? My ass, stupid as fuck, says nakji, because that's what I always learned. My wife and my wife's sister start going off on me. Nakji, nakji, nobody says nakji, bro. Everybody says mona. I didn't know. I've been, I've been looking at Nakji on menus for like 15 years. They got two words for octopus. So I used the wrong one. They patched it. Now they started to tell me, like when I had learned a little bit of Korean, they were like, you know, octopus is Nakji. Then I was speaking to people that speak Korean and they're like, Nakji only means the little octopuses. Why are they trying to divide us, man? Anyway, <laughs> the dolls, squid, squid's ojinga, bro. Don't get me started on squid. You think I don't know squid? You think I don't know Osam Bulgogi? I can already see that my wife is live. I'm going to send you over there. 
Is there a word for big squid? Yeah, ojinga da. That's a little joke for the Korean speakers amongst us. Explain it? No. Do it? Okay, it means more squid. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. There she goes with the blurt blurt station, pissing away in the congregation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought it was X, but she talks like Y. Reminds me I'm just a funny guy. Yeah, yeah. To the left and she dips to the right I'm afraid that she might see me as A finger licking chicken eater Wants to do it too afraid to fly So they'll never did land